Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's cold case is about a man called Alan Rosso who was a mechanic that worked in Blackpool. I think he was 34 years old and he was basically shot. So this is a um, murder obviously and the body was found but the case is still cold to this day. Um, I'm not entirely sure, I can't really remember when I researched this, but um, there might be some, you know, not, not very nice things mentioned about, like, details and stuff into the crime, that if you're quite sensitive to that, then maybe don't watch this video. But yeah, the reason why I do this is to get the story out there, get the case out there and hopefully get some answers for the family. So yeah, um, this is the cold case of Alan Rosser. If you guys uh, enjoy my content then please consider subscribing, you don't have to if you don't want to but it will help out my channel quite a bit if you did. But yeah, like I said, you don't have to if you don't want to but if you do find yourself watching a lot of my videos then maybe consider subscribing because you'll be alerted then when I do upload a video, which is on a Monday. We'll be changing the Wednesdays to a Friday. Notice not as many people kind of watch them on a Wednesday, so it will get more outreach on a Friday, which will be better for the case and also better for my channel. So yeah, consider subscribing guys if you haven't already. If you have then, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. This is the cold case of Alan Rosser. 34-year-old Alan Rosser was kidnapped by a gang of 10 men from his work as a mechanic in Blackpool back in March 1999. He was brutally beaten with iron bars and dumped off the side of the M55. It was suspected that the beating was a violent outcome of gang rivalry. Luckily, Alan walked away with only a few cuts and bruises. Eight months later, on the 12th of November at 6.30pm, Alan was found collapsed outside his garage. This was Imperial Engineering on Back Eve Street. He was found with a gunshot wound to his head. The sound of men fighting was heard in the area, and Alan had been shot at close range. He was shot with a 45 caliber bullet. He was then taken to Blackpool Victoria Hospital, then shortly after transferred to the Royal Preston Hospital, where sadly he passed away from his injuries the following day. A man wearing a dark bomber jacket and a woolly hat was seen running from Edgerton Road to Carshalton Road towards Shearbourne Road before disappearing after the shooting. A police squad of 75 officers handed out artist sketches of the man. He was white, thin, gaunt-faced, aged between 25 and 35 years old and about 6 foot 2 inches tall. They were going door to door in hopes that someone would recognise him. Detective Superintendent Graham Gooch said, it may be that this man has nothing to do with the murder, in which case we would urge him to come forward so we can eliminate him from the inquiry. The police handed out more than 4,000 leaflets. A roadside checkpoint was also set up, but the man still remains a mystery to this day. Alan Rosser seemed like a pretty law-abiding guy. He was no monster criminal. He only had a few motoring offences and a minor conviction for having cannabis on him. The more investigators from the Lancashire Police looked into Alan's life, the more they thought that he may have been involved in a low-level drug trafficking. Graham Gooch also said, We've had a lot of information about his connections, his business dealings and his social life. We know he used to travel all over the north of England and the Midlands, visiting clubs where he seemed to be well known to the DJs and door staffs in Sheffield, Birmingham, Wolverhampton and Manchester. 
Four men were tried for the kidnapping of Rossa at the Carlisle Crown Court in December 1999. Three of these were convicted. The motive for the crime was money inside Ross's garage. He had £40,000 worth of equipment. Investigators had a hunch that Alan owed quite a bit of money, possibly to his underworld connections. Jason Gillard was a well-known ganglord boss. He was arrested but found not guilty due to lack of evidence. Gillard was given an eight-year jail term for extortion in May 2003. He had blackmailed a 47-year-old garage boss, asking him for £1,000, and said if he didn't comply, he would be shot and his home would be burnt down. After this, trial inspectors found a possible link between Gillard and Rosser. Not only that, but Gillard had a link to another garage owner called Roger Ormsby. Roger had been found shot dead in his BMW in Mossside in January 2000. Roger was a 35-year-old. He had three children and was a well-known drug dealer. But like Alan, his murder has never been solved and the mystery remains to this day. A man was arrested in Whitefield in 2000 but was released without charge. Since then, the trial has gone cold. And that is the end of our case for today. I don't know what to think about these. Um, It's so frustrating because I just want to find the answers, you know. Um, It must be so, so frustrating for the families, you know, not knowing who the killer was, what they had done. I can't imagine. And especially if Roger had kids, you know, it's, I don't know, how do you explain that to a child? Yeah, so I don't know what to think about this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Um, I will be back with you on Friday this week. I'm going to start doing my solve cases on a Friday instead of doing them on a Wednesday because I find the outreach is better on the weekend. So many more people will be listening to this. You know, they might have answers. It'll just get the story out there a bit more which is what is needed in this case. So that is it, guys. I hope to see you, hear you, (laughs) um, you know what I mean, on Friday. And um, yeah, I hope you have a good week. Bye.